Hello everybody, welcome back to another video with Lim Reviews. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking about the newly launched Poco M4 Pro 5G that I have been using for almost two weeks now. Yes, if you remember very clearly, the Poco M3 Pro was just launched about five months ago in June and very quickly we are now already at the M4 Pro right here. So honestly speaking, I think it's a pretty fun time to be living in right now where we're seeing new iterations being released just across about half a year later. So we always have the newest and latest tech to play with. Now what's so cool about the Poco M4 Pro, what is new about it and what is the, actually the experience that I am actually getting from this device right here? Well let's find out in today's video. Now before I begin, of course if you could just drop a like, sub to the channel, that would be very much appreciated. Alright, let's start off very quickly with the pricing. Now obviously since I'm having this device here before the actual launch, I do not know the pricing yet but I'm expecting it to be very close to the Poco M3 Pro where it retailed for approximately between 700 ringgit to 900 ringgit. Now for all all of you guys in other parts of the world, that means it will be under 200 US dollars. It's going to be in the budget range of smartphones. All right, so now that we've got the pricing out of the way, let's talk very importantly here about the design of this guy right here. Now, you may notice that it looks very similar to the Redmi 11. And yes, it is basically a carbon copy of that device. But Poco put in their own touch of design elements here, as you can see from that huge black portion on the top part of the back panel. Now, this is actually quite cool looking. I do like the design uh, of this this Poco M4 Pro right here and it looks very much nicer than the, the Redmi 11 if you ask me. Now one thing I do need to highlight here is that the back panel here is completely made of matte materials and it is very nice to touch, it is very smooth and it doesn't capture that match fingerprint. So that's definitely a good thing there. Now one question I had in mind was, is the quality control of this device actually going slightly down because I noticed that whenever I glide my fingers on the back panel here, it does creak a little bit guys. What? So let me just put this device very close to my mic here and just glide my finger across and you should be able to hear the sound of those creaks. Yeah? Alright, so that's just what I had in mind. I'm just wondering like why is my device having these kind of creaks when I just glide my finger over the back panel right here. Very strange. But other than that, everything else is nicely built. If you notice on the sides here, it is quite a slim device. We have this silver grayish kind of uh, a metallic, I'm not sure what the actual material is, but it feels solid here uh, on the sides itself. And yes, we do have a uh, dual stereo speakers and we still have the headphone jack at the bottom that is actually retained. And I think that's a very good thing right there. All right, so that's just in terms of the design, very, very simple and good design here. But I also have to highlight one thing and that is the camera design on the top left panel. Now, if you just look very closely at this design here, from afar, you might think that it came with a quad camera setup because of that many circles that you see on the back. But actually, in actual fact, you only do have two sensors here. Uh, you do have one AI, uh, you do have another LED flash, and there's just this red dot there, just for, I'm not sure what is it there for, but bear in mind, you only get two sensors, guys. It's not like a quad camera setup or anything like that. All right, done with the design, guys. Let's talk a bit about the, the display at the front. So just flipping the device back to the front here, we do see that we have a 6.6 inch LCD display that is refreshed at 90 hertz. Now bear in mind that the touch sampling rate here has been improved to 240 hertz, but honestly speaking, that is nothing too much to shout about. Basically, everything is smooth, but it's not super smooth. It's not buttery smooth, but it's smooth enough that you feel happy using this LCD display. Now, just like its previous uh, predecessor, the brightness of this LCD display doesn't get that bright. So again, if you are outdoors most of the time, you might struggle a little bit to see the display here on the Poco M4 Pro. But otherwise, Yes, you still get that dot display which means the, the tiny camera is still in the dead center in the front. And other than that, I think it's a pretty decent display. At this kind of price point, you do get 90 hertz, 6.6 .6 inch, which is fairly larger than the previous 6.5 inch. And I think I'm quite satisfied with the display right here. Alright, so now done with the display, let's talk about the performance of this device here. What's new? What kind of experience increment can you get from the Poco M4 Pro? Well, first up, in terms of the processor-wise, we're getting the Dimensity 810, and that is a, a slight incremental upgrade compared to the previous gen Dimensity 700. Now, what do I mean by incremental? So if I just put this device here through a Geekbench score, you'll notice that the 810 here is about 10 to 12 percent a higher ranking in terms of the uh, comparison to the Dimensity 700. That means in terms of performance, you would see a slight 10 to 12% increase in performance over there. Again, this is not much, it's not incremental, but if you are using it on a day-to-day basis, you will actually feel that slight difference in performance bump. So that's something to take note of. Now, since we're talking about performance and how we use the phone, uh, let me also talk a little bit about the haptics engine in the Poco M4 Pro. Now, this is where 
we are seeing the biggest update guys. On a phone that is a budget phone, we are actually getting the x-axis haptics that even some phones that cost twice or thrice the price of this device here do not have. So I'm very, very pleased to say that the haptics engine on the Poco M4 Pro guys, it's a dual thumbs up right there. Very, very good haptics. And you can feel it throughout the entire user interface. It's just very nice. All right, so let's talk a little bit about gaming. Obviously, you might want to play a little bit of games. Yes, I did try Mobile Legends. It can't go all the way to ultra graphic settings, but I could still play on high graphic settings decently on the Poco M4 Pro. Now, you're not going to get the best performance here. Obviously, you just got to accept the fact that this is a budget kind of device. So the kind of experience is that you can play games. Yes, sure, but not the most highest graphic intensive kind of graphics that you can expect from the top smartphones, if that makes sense. All right, so now gaming is gaming. Again, back to day-to-day -to -day use, I find that launching apps is not the fastest, it's fine. Everything runs very smoothly and I did not face any bugs or delays here and there. There's no hangs with MIUI. And so far, it's just a decent experience, something that I would expect from a device that costs this amount of money. All right, so that's just in terms of the performance. Let's talk very quickly about the cameras at the back. Now, this is actually quite an improvement compared to the Poco M3 Pro. Back then, we had a 48 megapixel main sensor and we had two useless a depth and macro lens, which honestly speaking, no one really uses. But now we do get a 50 megapixel main sensor and a very useful 8 megapixel ultra wide sensor. I say useful because this is something that you might actually want to use when you're taking photos in a very narrow space. All right, so again, I don't want to mislead you by telling you that this 50 megapixel sensor is a great sensor. Yes, we do have many 50 megapixel sensors in the market that are awesome, especially the IMX 766, but those are only on the flagships. On this Poco M4 Pro right here, the photos taken using this sensor right here looks pretty decent. It looks quite average at best. I won't say that it is a very, very good looking kind of picture. Of course, if you have bright daylight, uh, a lot of uh, sunlight around you, you will get photos that looks a little bit better. But when it comes to the dark, the night mode works well. It's not a huge upgrade compared to the previous version that I saw with the Poco M3 Pro. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of photos here. This is what you can expect with the cameras on the Poco M4 Pro on a daily basis. Again, just to sum it up here, do not expect huge performance on this 50 megapixel sensor, although the number sounds large, but it is a very decent average snapper. All right, guys, so before I go on and talk about the battery, let's just talk a bit about one final thing here, and that is the dual stereo speakers that comes on the Poco M3 Pro. Now, bear in mind that these speakers here, once again, Poco is doing a great job here by giving us decent audio coming out from these dual stereo speakers. So I'm definitely happy to say that regardless of whether you're playing your games or you're watching YouTube videos or whatnot, you will get that stereo kind of sound coming from this device right here. All right, now we'll add the final part. Let's talk a bit about the battery here. So we do have a 5,000 mAh battery in the back. Again, it's not very heavy and just look at this form factor guys. 5,000 mAh in this form factor is definitely good. But the main improvement here is in terms of the charging speeds. So Poco is now providing charging speeds up to 33 watts. That means you can go from 0 to 100% in just about one hour. Again, it's not the fastest here but it's much improved compared to the Poco M3 Pro. Alright guys, so bottom line, what is this Poco M4 Pro all about? Well, honestly speaking, if you're in the market today looking for the best budget device, I would say that this is something that you might actually want to consider. Uh, you do get a decent set of specs and you do get a decent camera here and there. Everything is just decent, but that's also because this is a budget affordable device. Now, if you are already using the Poco M3 Pro, for example, I don't think you need to upgrade to the Poco M4 Pro. Don't worry, stay with your device. It's just like less than 10% away. But yes, this is what you can expect with the Poco M4 Pro. Now, all right, guys, if you do have any other questions that you would like to know about this device here, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I do hope you have learned something from this video right here and maybe help you out in your future purchase decision. I think that's pretty much it guys. I hope all of you are staying safe. Uh, don't forget to like the video, uh, sub to the channel if you want to see more content like this and I hope to see all of you guys in the next one. Stay safe everybody. Bye!